partition functions can be used to find state functions. For example, to find the internal energy, we begin with the energy per molecule, being capital E over capital N, and that's equal to the sum over I of Ni times Ei, divided by the sum over I of Ni. Substituting in the number of particles in state Ni, which is equal to n naught e to the negative ei over kb times t gives e over n being equal to the sum over i of n naught ei times e to the negative ei over kbt all over the sum of i times n naught e raised to the power of negative ei over kbt. In this case, I've also multiplied both sides by capital N so that I've just got the energy is equal to this expression. We can divide out the n-naughts, and also the denominator in this case is equal to the definition of the partition function q. So in this case we have a final expression for the energy is equal to capital N times the sum over i, ei times the exponent of negative ei over kbt, divided by the partition function q. To simplify this expression further, we must first return to the definition of a partition function and take the derivative as a function of temperature at constant volume. So the partial derivative of the partition function with respect to temperature at constant volume is the same as taking the derivative of the sum over i of e raised to the power of ei over kbt. And when we take that partial derivative with respect to temperature, what we end up with is 1 over kb times t squared times the sum over i of ei times e to the negative ei over kbt. Rearranging this so that we have the sum written onto one side of the equation and everything else to the other side, we get the sum over i times ei times e to the negative ei over kbt, and that's equal to kb times t squared over the partial derivative of the, par of the partition function with respect to temperature at constant volume. The left-hand side of this equation is in the numerator of our current expression presented on the previous slide. Putting this result into our definition gives e being equal to n times the Boltzmann constant times t squared times the partial derivative of the partition function with respect to temperature at constant volume divided by the partition function. Now we have the partial derivative of q with respect to t at constant volume divided by the partition function q. Another way of expressing this is the par partial derivative of the natural logarithm of q with respect to t at constant volume. If the chain rule is applied to this expression, we take the derivative of the outer function first, being the natural logarithm of q, which is 1 over q, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function q with respect to t. So substituting in the partial derivative of the natural logarithm of q with respect to t at constant volume into our expression, and assuming that we are operating on one mole of gas, gives the molar energy being equal to r times t squared times the partial derivative of the natural logarithm of q with respect to temperature at constant volume. If we add heat to the system at constant volume, then no work is being performed. Therefore, this energy expression quantifies the internal energy of the system. The molar internal energy naught is simply the energy at zero Kelvin, and is meant to define a reference energy for the molar internal energy. This expression shows the direct relationship between the partition function and a thermodynamic state function. Statistical mechanics is a powerful model which can be used to quantify many macroscopic observations. So in our final example, what we're going to do is take that expression that we just derived and we're going to calculate the internal energy for one mole of a monatomic gas using partition functions. And then once we have that, then we're going to then determine the molar heat capacity at constant volume. So that expression that we just calculated was the molar heat or the molar internal energy minus the molar internal energy naught, and that's equal to RT squared times the partial derivative of the natural logarithm of the partition function with respect to temperature at constant volume. And the thing that we have to remember is that we're dealing with a monatomic gas, like say argon. And so because it's monatomic, then it can translate in any of the three Cartesian directions, being x, y, or z. However, because there's only one atom per molecule, then there's no rotational degrees of freedom and there's no vibrational degrees of freedom because if it's symmetric under rotation and it's not vibrating with anything. That greatly simplifies our, our expression for our partition function because then we only have to worry about the translational part or the translational partition function. 
So let's substitute that directly into our expression. RT squared, we're going to be taking the partial derivative of the natural logarithm of Q trans, which is 2 pi m times kb times t raised to the power of 3 halves times the volume divided by Planck's constant cubed. And for that, then this is this derivative with respect to temperature, all at constant volume. Well, if we take this derivative, when we take the natural logarithm of something, then the first part of this, is the derivative of the outer function, is just to take 1 over all of the internal part to the natural logarithm. So that means we have h cubed on top divided by 2 pi m k b t raised to the power of 3 halves times the volume. And then we have times the derivative of the inner function. Well, we're going to get a 2 pi m k b raised to the power of 3 halves divided by h cubed times v, because all of that is a constant, because the only thing that is going to be directly affected by this derivative is just this temperature term. So really all we're doing is we're just taking the derivative of the temperature raised to the power of 3 halves. And so when we take that derivative, what we end up with is 3 halves t raised to the 1 half. And that's basically what I'm just writing into here. This is the only part where that derivative of the inner function really changes anything. So now that I have that, I can start crossing off terms. And before I do that, I'm going to just make sure I keep adding in my RT squared at the front. But here now I can cross off Planck's constant cubed. I can cancel off 2 pi. I can cancel out the m. We can cancel out the Boltzmann's factor. And we can cancel out the volume. And so what we're left with then is RT squared. And here I've got a 3 halves, and then I've got a t raised to the 3 halves on the bottom, and the t raised to a 1 half on top. So 1 half divided by 3 halves gives me a 1 over t. Simplifying this expression, well, I can cross off the square on top and the 1 over t. And so what we're left with is 3 halves rt which is exactly what we had determined previously a couple of lectures ago for the internal energy of a monatomic gas, where each part of the monatomic gas contributed one-half RT for each degree of freedom, being motion in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. So now that we have that, and it's very remarkable that we're able to just calculate this from partition functions, but from that we can now determine what is the molar heat capacity at constant volume. Because to do that, all we're going to do is we're just going to take the partial derivative of um, the molar internal energy divided by the molar internal energy naught with respect to temperature at constant volume, which is the definition of the molar heat capacity at constant volume. When we substitute in our expression for the molar internal energy minus the molar internal energy naught, we get 3 halves RT. We're taking the partial derivative with respect to temperature at constant volume. And what we end up with is, well, the 3 halves rt comes up front, so we're just taking the derivative of t with respect to t, which just gives us 1. And so in the end, we just get 3 halves r, which again is exactly what we had determined before when we did this from the equipartition theorem. Here is a summary of what was covered in this lecture. A microstate quantifies the state of individual molecules, while a macrostate groups together microstates with similar properties. As the number of atoms increase, the number of likely observable macrostates decreases. This is because each microstate is assumed to be equally likely to be visited, and many microstates tend to fall under a few macrostates for large numbers of atoms. The number of microstates in a distribution is found by calculating w, which is equal to n factorial, where n is the total number of states, divided by the product of n i factorial, where n i is the number in each individual state. This value can serve to represent the probability of a particular macrostate occurring. Assuming that each microstate is equally likely, then the more microstates in a given macrostate means that the more probable that macrostate will occur. The partition function, 
which quantifies the number of accessible states at a given temperature, is determined as the sum over i of e raised to the power of negative of the energy of the ith state divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. And finally, the partition function is used to determine thermodynamic state functions, such as the internal energy.